Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Parish. Before Mass begins, we ask that you please turn off or silence all cell phones. The entrance hymn can be found in the Missal, number 84. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, number 84. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they profess, are counted, accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following a flock and said to me, go, prophesy to my people, Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times, to sum all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Words taken from today's first reading. Here the prophet Amos tries to convince his hearers of his sincerity when prophesying their doom by pointing out that he didn't even want to be a prophet. He had been happy on the farm, minding his own business, when God burdened him with a spirit of prophecy that compelled him to go and correct them. We don't hear of this kind of divine recruitment any longer. 
not because God does not choose souls to do it, but because he chooses so many to do it. The function of the Old Testament prophets is to be continued in the New Covenant by every Christian. Christians, by their very nature, are to be such prophets in the sense of spreading the faith by their words and deeds. Yet, although we have this duty to spread our faith to those we associate with, we see non-Catholics far surpassing us by their efforts and enthusiasm and recruiting souls into their ranks. These self-appointed evangelists are doing far more than we who are duty-bound as far as bringing non-believers to the truth, even though these non-Catholics cannot deliver the fullness of truth entrusted to and preserved by the Church. After a person's entry into some other Christian denomination, they sometimes come to realize that something is still missing. They get fellowship and emotional satisfaction, but their deep longing for union with the divine is never really addressed. Unfortunately, they often then assume that all Christianity is equally incapable of satisfying this longing, including Catholicism. So, disillusioned, they give up and sink back into the worldliness from which they briefly arose. This is a great misfortune, both for those potential Catholics who never entered the fold, as well as our faithful Catholics in the pew. First, it's a misfortune for those potential Catholics because they are deprived of the sacraments, which gives us enormous help in attaining sanctity and salvation. The majority of our separated brethren have discarded the Church's sacraments, all except for baptism, thanks to its being described in Scripture more obviously than the others. This followed from the fact that our Lord had the apostles administering baptism immediately in order to usher new converts into the life of an adopted child of God. However, as we know, children misbehave, even divinely adopted children. And so a means of being reconciled to God is very much needed. Unfortunately, by their separating themselves from the legitimate authority of our Lord's Church, the ability of other Christian denominations to validly forgive sins was lost. Without sacramental confession, this vast number of souls are without a guaranteed means of being re restored to the life of grace if they lose it through serious sin. Second, their remaining outside the visible church deprives those within the church of many people who would be helping us to be saved. We are aided in our struggles by the intercession of the saints in heaven, the souls in purgatory, but also by the prayers of our fellow pilgrims. No one is ever saved alone. Our intercessory prayers for each other are a sign of true charity for one another and are very pleasing to God. He and he has promised to reward such generosity with an even greater generosity on his part. But if those who would have been interceding for us are never evangelized, our own stay in purgatory may be that much longer, assuming that we make it to purgatory without their prayers. When we bring others to the faith or bring them back to the faith, we assist not only ourselves, but the entire church due to our connection in the communion of saints. Today, as we know, we suffer from a shortage of laborers working in the Lord's vineyard. Yet, although priests are in short supply, 
the crisis would be lightened considerably if the laity took their job of evangelization seriously and took the initiative to highlight our faith's positive and holy aspects rather than merely criticizing the flaws they see in non-Catholics. I recommend personally taking baby steps with potential converts, perhaps inviting them to an early mass and breakfast, or short visit to the Blessed Sacrament in connection with lunch, or another suitable combination that would seem tolerable to someone who is presently immersed in the world. Too often, converts are scared away by our impatience and haste to correct more than they're willing to change in their current mindset. Because of their diverse interests, lay people can penetrate political, social, and corporate areas of society that are normally inaccessible to priests and religious. Lay people can more consistently, and therefore more effectively, evangelize those around them by their attitude, speech, and appearance than can priests, whom they know of only through the mainstream media's distortions. Also, when people see modesty, kindness, and prudence in a relative or co-worker, that can often make a real impression on them due to their ability to identify with them, something they cannot do with a priest normally. What often hinders lay people from being effective in their evangelizing is when they allow themselves to become so busy with unnecessary worldly affairs that they are always distracted from hearing God's inspirations. Now, we all have to earn a living and get proper recreation, of course. But we must also include some leisure time in which we can read, pray, and develop our spiritual life. Without this, we can neither advance in our own faith nor be a convincing witness to others. If our Lord thought that a mere sack and second tunic would distract his disciples from their duties, what do you think he would say to us? An overabundance hinders both our own progress in the faith and indirectly that of potential Catholics who cannot see Christ in our busyness. If we are to spread the gospel as we should, the example of a life free of material attachments and excessive pleasures can be often more important than our words. Consider that at our death, every possession we have will be left behind. When we appear before the judgment seat of God, what will we have to counterbalance our many sins? The only thing that will accompany us is our spiritual merits. Hopefully, our prayers and penances will amount to something noticeable. But what cannot fail to be noticed by the divine judge are the souls gathered around him, waiting to thank us for our part in bringing them to heaven through our words and example. Let us pray that there be many such souls waiting for us and that the Lord will invite them to step down to the scales of justice opposite our sins and gain for us a place at their side, where we will together celebrate our charity for one another and the reward it received in the kingdom of heaven. Let us stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Let us now join our hearts and voices in prayer for all who journey with us in faith to the fullness of God's kingdom. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops, priests, may they come to lead the faithful in proclaiming and living the truths of our faith with wisdom, courage, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may they recognize God as the source of truth and justice and peace and work together to build a civilization of love based on the laws of nature and nature's God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those called by God to the vocation of the ordained ministry and consecrated life in the church, may they give a joyful witness to the primacy of the treasures of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we respond to the word of God who calls us to renew our hearts, spread the gospel, and transform our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering, especially Dan Cahill, may the Lord strengthen them in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, especially Barbara Knott, Clark James O'Brien, Florence Rangan, and Eric Vokoyevich. May they inherit God's promise of eternal life in heaven through the resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions submitted to our St. John's prayer line ministry and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for the special intention of Celestina Kim, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Loving Father, you destined us for adoption through Jesus Christ so that we might be forgiven and redeemed. Graciously hear our prayers for the world you have created and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn can be found in the Missal, number 233. Praise to the Lord, number 233.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a, similar way, <clears throat> in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint John the Baptist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The First Communion hymn found in the Missal number 262, The King of Love, number 262. The second communion hymn, number 182, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence, number 182.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Flyers are in the back of the church for a pro-life teen leadership camp taking place in Alhambra the week of July 18th to the 23rd. If you are interested in attending and arranging a carpool to help make the transportation possible, please contact Father Augustine. For all the other announcements, kindly check the bulletin or our parish website. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.